Wow, what an interesting month it has been. Yes. You know, it's, uh, it's been a beautiful and amazing exploration of visioning, which is a, a practice that I, I have in my life that I do quite often, mm -hmm. as well as uh, our community and Centers for Spiritual Living. You know, uh, Dr. Michael Beck was said that the purpose of visioning is not simply about the narrow confines of personal fulfillment. It is an expansion of consciousness into the realization of one's true self. So, you know, some of the things that we've talked about this month is the idea that, you know, visioning consciously opens us to be receptive to the impress of universal spirit. It is the practice of cultivating, just like spring is happening right mm -hmm. now, it is the practice of cultivating the field of consciousness and illuminating what wants to emerge into form without any preconceived ideas or limitations. And the second week, uh, Reverend Raymond, man, he was just so amazing, talked about the release of visioning that we're releasing all the time and he brought it down to a practical application of release and that we have to let go in order for spirit's grandest divine idea of, of us to manifest. Today, for example, we are going to dive deeper into visioning and practi the practice of visioning individually and together. Mm -hmm. But last week... I shared the story of Avram or Avraham and his father's statues, how we as humans put our faith, faith in false idols. Mm -hmm. And Reverend Rainbow asked us to open our arms and to be open to possibilities as she talked about the idea that when we consciously use the creative process, what happens is we embrace a new thought or a new idea, planning it into the creative medium, assured of its demonstration by our embodiment of it. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have to let the law know what we want. Yeah. You know, we're always saying that the law says yes, but what about us? Mm -hmm. You know, are we saying yes to our life and yes to becoming so instead of using the creative process to demonstrate change conditions, visioning uses the creative process to embrace a new way of being, mm. the embodiment of which results in personal transformation. We talked, you talked mm -hmm. about that last week. And transcending the old beliefs, the old uh, stories that keep us living in the past. And it takes a lot of energy to live from our old stories, mm -hmm. to live from the past and all of our pains and hurts, not that they aren't valuable, but it takes a lot of energy to put ourselves there and to continue to be there. The energy of release is so much more freeing, mm -hmm. isn't it? <laughs> so we do not manifest the vision, rather we attune and align ourselves with it, becoming the avenues through which it reveals itself as our lived experience. So this morning, as I said earlier, Reverend Rainbow and I decided to address and talk about the practical application of visioning much more in depth. Yes. That's why we have our stools here. Yes. So we can, you know, we gotta, we gotta just relax. You it's know, like a, putting your thinking cap on. You yeah. Gotta... A deeper understanding, if you will. <laughs> so, so, Reverend Rainbow, let's break, let's it, break down, it down step by step. All right. Uh, so we refer to this. Uh, we refer to this idea, right, of a highest vision. Yes. So, Reverend Sunny. Oh, she's gonna ask me first. I'm, I'm gonna talk to you first. So oh, we say down. in vision, we ask this question, like, what is the highest vision for my life? But I want to know, what does that really mean? Like, whose idea? Is it some God in the sky that, like, has this grand divine idea for our life that, you know, we're supposed to listen to? Is it, uh, you know, some big idea or purpose or vision for our lives that we need to live up to? Like, whose highest idea? Like, what is it? What is, tell me more about this 
highest idea for our life? Well, I love this question because, um, you know, how many times have we said or heard, I know it's been said a lot, <laughs> that we cannot solve a problem at the same level of consciousness that created it. Right. So we're being called to a higher level of consciousness, a consciousness which realizes there's a powerful good there's a power for good mm. in the universe, and it uses me. Mm. The song, Use Me, yeah. uh, Ricky Byers, mm. use me, oh God, use me. So there's that consciousness that is the higher consciousness of our, you know, everyday walking around consciousness, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we participate in visioning in order to go beyond our personal desires and tap into the infinite spiritual wisdom that is our own consciousness because if we are the living embodiment of the one mind the one power the one source then it's also our consciousness mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. we open to the highest ideal and the highest idea we align our consciousness with the divine purpose which is to love ourselves mm -hmm. and express that love in our own unique way so let me give you an example. All right. Can you imagine a garden hose, right, that's mm -hmm. attached to a water spigot? The spigot is source. Mm. Think about that. The mm -hmm. spigot is source. The water is turned on and it's flowing. How much water comes out the end of the garden hose depends on whether or not the hose is obstructed. Mm -hmm. The water is flowing fully, and yet at the other end of the hose, water may be dribbling out. Hmm. Our spiritual work is to remove the obstructions in the garden hose to allow the full flow of water. God is the water flowing. Mm -hmm. The degree to which we experience that flow, the givingness of spirit in our lives, is to the degree that we are able to for the channels to flow through. So that's our higher consciousness. We're mm -hmm. aligning with it. We're turning on the tap. And our work is unkinking the mm -hmm. hose mm -hmm. so that spirit can flow through fully into our higher consciousness as our higher consciousness. We don't need to do anything about the flow of water. The opportunity is to make the hose a more able instrument to allow the water to flow through. The hose, visioning, mm. right? So what does it mean? Does that help? Does, it, I hope that, yeah. Yeah, That's yeah, what, yeah, yeah. So we're like listening to, we're basically tapping into that infinite mind that is also our mind, like mm -hmm. some may call it our higher self, mm -hmm. and listening for that guidance that flow that's that's always coming from source energy but we're the hose and we have to unkink ourselves in order so the visioning pro process mm -hmm. <laughs> helps us to uh be that clear channel and perfect. listen for that guidance perfect right, i got it yeah. so you want to tackle release what does it mean yeah. to release yeah so then well that goes perfectly right into it because it's like how do we become that clear vessel in order for spirit's vision to come through so i love you know reverend raymond spoke a couple weeks ago on our zoom service a, you know, the whole time about release and letting go. And, and he says, you know, if, if we had a, a dollar for every time in these kind of spiritual conversations, we talk about letting go, we'd be a millionaire by now. Millionaire. Because right? yeah. we're always saying, we just got to let go. I just got to let go. We got to release. We sing about it. We talk about it all the time. And that's because it really is our main spiritual work because it's just letting go of all the things that we've put into our mind, our awareness, our consciousness that no longer serve us. So we can be that clear, pristine vessel to remember who we truly are. Michael Beckwith says all spiritual growth, 100% of it, is about releasing or eliminating rather than attaining something because we already are it, mm -hmm. spiritually speaking, right? Yes. So releasing, we have to release what no longer serves. We have to let go of the old stories, let go of the old baggage. And because the vision, like we talked about last week, that train track that's, you know, 
uh, pulling us forward, the vision is already complete in the mind of God. So our work is to become that more effective vessel for spirit to flow through us in order to allow that vision to come to life through us. And this is where personal transformation work comes in in the form of releasing and letting go letting go of those old beliefs, letting go of the, uh, the patterns, the habits, the stories we tell ourselves that are just no longer true. You know, and they may have served us at some point, but in this now moment, we're always asking. That's why it's a continual process. We're always asking right now, what no longer serves me? What am I willing to let go in order for this highest vision to be actualized in my life? So the work is always ongoing, always revealing, kind of as they say, the next layer of the onion, a next level of healing to be done for that transformational work, releasing those old patterns in order to be that vessel. And so we ask our higher self and we listen to that guidance in that moment of what stories, what beliefs, what false ideas no longer serve us, what ways of treating ourselves or others, old habits, are we ready to let go of? As Michael Beckwith says, healing is remembering so we can forget yeah exactly you remember so you can let go right yes. so it's a, yes. so we we can't just like shove it away we still have to do the work of asking what needs to be released and allow it to come to the forefront of our consciousness and our awareness look at it and then let it go so healing is remembering so that we can forget <laughs> remembering so that we can forget so we can let it go so we can actually transform transmute transcend those old ideas we ask what is ours to release in order to allow this highest potential in our life uh, to be fully expressed, to really be the love that we are here to be about? You know, what, for me specifically in, in doing the visioning process, what comes up when I ask this question, there's a lot of themes. There's common themes, rather, around lack. It's usually letting go of, you know, not good enough or not enough time, not enough money, not enough resources, not enough energy, whatever it may be. So it's often releasing any ideas of lack, of limitation, of fear, of doubt. And when we move that, clear that out, what we are left with is embracing who we truly are, that divine truth, those qualities of life such as wholeness and love, peace and vitality, right? Mm -hmm. So then that brings us naturally in this visioning process to the next step. So, Reverend Sonny, tell us a little bit about this idea of embracing. When we ask ourselves, what must I embrace? Well, you know... Uh, one thing before I uh, talk about embrace is what I hear you saying, too, is that you have to ask at that higher consciousness or the higher level of what needs to be released, because if the human part of us is talking about release, we might have all kinds of things. We might, you know, we might want to release some person, you know, I right. don't know. But when you're in that higher consciousness of visioning, then the universe, you're so tied into the universe because there is no separation that there is a higher release that yes. has to be called forth. Yes. That's what I'm hearing anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. So embrace is really interesting because we know that we cannot experience anything that we're not willing to embrace in consciousness. Mm. Mm -hmm. We cannot experience anything that we are not willing to embrace in consciousness. It's really important because in doing the work of releasing and embracing, we are transformed and we have to come into alignment with the vision. You know, what this reminds me of is uh, something that I talk about a lot, the circle of availability. Mm. You know, if you can imagine a circle of availability and we all live within that circle that we've created of availability and we won't do anything that separates us or takes us out of that sphere or circle of availability unless we can let go and embrace something new. So what happens is we have to expand 
our circle or our sphere of availability in order to let something else in. So we have to embrace, right? We have to embrace and then we have to expand. Embrace and expand. One way to expand our avail availability is to embrace the possibility. Yeah. So, you know, left to my own devices, I can come up with all kinds of excuses, you know, why I'm not going to do this or why I'm not going to do that or why I'm still uh, hanging on to an old story. But if we're living from that higher consciousness and we're ready to embrace a new possibility, then our sphere of availability automatically begins to expand. Mm. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we often hear is we, we've done the visioning process now. Okay, so I've, I've released and I've, you know, I've gotten into my higher self, my higher consciousness, and I've embraced, but what, what did the vision, what, what now? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, what now? So what now? What now? All right, so you've done the work, you have your vision. Well, are you ready? In order for this highest vision to unfold, you must be willing to transform your consciousness. Willing. There's that you must word be again. Willing. Willingness. Yes. Willing. So this is really where we where we do our part, where we do our work. So we're open, we're receptive, we're listening, we're getting the guidance through the visioning process, but then we must be willing to actually have our lives transformed. Oh. To actually have that shift in consciousness, to have that shift such that we can live being pulled from vision instead of being pushed from pain. And it takes a little willingness to commit to our transformation. We must be willing to do the spiritual work of releasing what we've been guided to release. You know, so you do the process, you write it down, but you don't just tuck it away. You remain available to notice when perhaps whatever that was revealed to you to release, whether it be some form of doubt or lack or limitation, mm -hmm. when that old thought or pattern comes back, now that you have been guided to let that go, you must pay attention so you can actually do the work to release it. And then when you are guided to what you are to be, to become, to embody. This is the work to consciously now plant those new seeds in your own mind, in the one mind, and to consciously embody the love, embody the peace, the joy, whatever was revealed to you in your own visioning process. We put the work in by remaining awake and aware to the vision, allowing it to pull us and a living intentionally in alignment to what has been revealed, right? So first we just start with being willing to allow transformation to occur. And then we pay attention and we do the work when it is revealed to us. So as we release what no longer serves us the, uh, and embrace the higher ideas of who we are here to be, this vision will naturally unfold. The process of allowing is aligning with what already is, right? It's, it's what we talked about last week. It's just becoming who we already are. Michael Beckwith says, where there is a willingness, there is a way. Mm -hmm. Where there is a willfulness, there is a wall. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between a willingness and a willfulness? So a willingness, notice my body just kind of naturally yeah, did Yeah, yeah, right? that willful also uh, com uh, you know, accompanies that but, yeah, but I but, can't do it, yes. but uh, that we talked about last week, mm -hmm. yeah. So being willing, it's... It's the state of surrender. It's a state mm. of allowing, of openness, mm -hmm. of curiosity. Uh, and then the willfulness is when we start to get more into our own mind, what some call the ego, to like make things happen. Mm. You know, I will will this to happen. But when we're being willful about something, again, comes in that control, our personality, rather, we hit a wall. 
And I can tell you this from experience, it's exhausting. <laughs> exhausting. <laughs> Pushing that wall, trying to make it happen is exhausting. And floating easily on the lazy river through willingness is a much more enjoyable ride. I can tell you that. So there's nothing that we have to make happen. We simply rest in the awareness that the vision has been revealed and it's already complete. And so we are aligning with it and we are committing to our transformation by remaining willing, awake and aware and willing to do the work of what is ours to release and we do this work with love, with grace, right? It's not about beating ourselves up for uh, our old habits or patterns. We just gently guide ourselves back on track and become the beholders of the grace of love unfolding as our life right here, right now, and be those willing instruments of the divine and fulfilling our purpose. Which is? To be love. To be love. And, you know... Here's the thing also that I'm hearing you say. It doesn't mean that we don't do the work yeah. to support the vision that has been revealed. But what it does mean is that we can't force it. Because if, but if we do do our work, here's my favorite thing again. What? If we plan our work mm -hmm. and work our plan, the universe is going to support that yeah. in every way. And that's why the universe always says yes. So you can't force something to happen. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the willingness, like you said, is the surrender. And I love that. Yeah. Surrender is so beautiful and it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. People think that it's giving up, you know, because we used to have that little white flag. Right. But the reality is it is taking back your power. Yes, it's allowing a power mm -hmm. even greater than we can even imagine yes. to take hold. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, last week we reminded you, and this week you saw little reminders on, uh, on Facebook, to bring a piece of paper and a pen to the service this week because we wanted to give you all an idea and an opportunity to experience visioning. Um, so we're going to start out with a little meditation. We're gonna only do uh, one and a half questions <laughs> because we don't have time, obviously, to do a whole visioning for everyone. Um, so for the sake of time, we will ask this question. Um, and after the visioning, we will just automatically go into prayer to support your vision. Mm -hmm. So let's begin. Uh, I'm giving you all time. I'm talking so that you can get your pen and your paper. So I'm going to invite you to close your eyes in this moment. And really surrender. Surrender to the possibility. Surrender to that higher wisdom self. And I invite you in this moment to simply drop into that heart space. And really let go. You have nowhere to be other than in this moment, in time, in space, right here and right now. So allow your breath to guide you. Maybe take a nice deep breath right now. And let it go. One more time. Nice deep breath. Expanding your chest and just letting it go. As you let it go, allow it to flow into that higher consciousness that has been revealing itself to you all along. But in this moment, I invite you to open your mind open your heart
open yourself in its entirety to this moment. And when I ask the next question, I invite you to not try and analyze or figure it out. You have nothing to do except to write down the first thing that comes to your mind. Continuing to drop in. I invite you to go deep, deep into that holy self and allow the higher consciousness to be revealed in this moment as I ask the question, what is God's grandest divine idea of me and who must I become to fulfill this vision? What is God's grandest divine idea of me and who must I be or become to fulfill this vision? What is God's grandest divine idea of me and who must I become to fulfill this vision? And staying with this vibration that has been accepted this morning, continuing to drop even further into that higher wisdom self where deep meets deep. I know that I relax and I behold God's grace unfolding as my life in this moment. For there is only one, there is only one source of all things, one life eternal. There is only one. I know that there is only one mind and this is my mind now. As I declare and stand in the power and the presence of love, of peace, of joy, of abundance and prosperity, of power and order and beauty and grace and all of these wonderful, amazing values and principles of the one source of all. For I know that God is and I am. God is and I am. God is and I am. And it is from this place of I am that I lie open to the infinite and speak this word for each and every person within the sound of my voice, for this community, knowing that as we lie open to the infinite, right here and right now, every possibility every possibility is becoming known and I know right here and right now that nothing can stand in the way of this visioning for it is our higher self that is calling us to the goodness and the grace of the one to the goodness and the grace of the universe of spirit of joy of love of prosperity of abundance of freedom 
power and order. And so I know as we are being called forth that we stand in this power and this presence, knowing that everything is in complete and absolute order, unfolding for the highest good of all. Whatever the vision may be, I know that it is supported by the universe. And that the universe opens wide and deep and high simply to support all that has been revealed in this moment in time, right here, right now. I know that the power in the presence is operating fully and I expect good not only for myself but for this community and so I stand in the truth knowing that all is unfolding through the grace through the grace of God as I pass my word to Reverend Rainbow and I take a deep breath of full acceptance as I swing wide those doors of willingness, opening my heart to receive, to be, to become, and to fully embody this vision, knowing that it's truly already done in the mind of God. So I step forth from this moment forward, being who I already am allowing this highest vision to lead and to guide me with every word, every step I take. I am that I am. Open and receptive always, allowing this vision to continue to percolate, to continue to reveal itself to me as I continue to grow and transform, committing to my transformation right here, right now. I remain committed to staying on track of that one mind and allowing the vision to unfold perfectly, knowing that there's nothing to do but simply allow, simply be all that I am to be, allowing love always as that guiding force in my life. So again, with great gratitude, I just take a deep breath of full acceptance. So grateful, so grateful that this is my life that I get to live. That this vision is unfolding perfectly right here, right now as me. As I say yes to it, I know that the law too always says yes. Yes. Yes, my beloved. Yes, yes, yes. 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 It is done. Yes. It yes. is so. And so it is.